Hello, everybody from Matthews, Virginia. How are you doing today? I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts, and today we are doing the joy applique. I hope you follow along and get this PDF tracing file while it's free. It's going to be free through October the 26th. Friday the 27th is going in my Etsy shop and will be combined with the cutting files that are already there. So if you have a cutting machine and you want to get the cutting file for the joy applique, all those links will be in the description box. How are you doing? Hello everybody. It is so pretty outside. When the weather is like this, it's so hard to be inside, but I'm really looking forward to sewing with you today. Today we are doing the joy applique and this applique is formatted to fit a finished 12 inch quilt block, but I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with you today. I've been trying to give you ideas. You know, not everybody has time or the desire to make a full quilt using these appliques. So I've been trying to give you a few ideas of what you can do with them if you don't want to make them into a quilt or use them as part of a quilt. So I'm going to be switching it up and doing something a little bit different with you today. But if you were to take this block and make it a finished 12 inch quilt block and let's say you put it into a table runner. I'm going to show you an example of a table runner that I call joy 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 <laughs> and it's just three joy blocks put together with a small little sashing around the blocks and a border. Isn't that pretty? I think it would be very festive on a side table, on your dining table, on your kitchen counter, uh, as you have friends and family gather, right? That is what Joy 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 Table Runner would look like if you did this as a finished 12 inch block. Now stay tuned and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification. When you hit the bell notification, a little menu will pop up. If you choose all, you should technically get notified when I post new videos. So uh, next Thursday when I post uh, the thumbnail for next week's block, you'll be able to get my autumn sunbonnet Sioux block. Let's take a look at what we're doing next week. Isn't that awesome? Now what's really cool about this block is you could forego doing the leaves and do something else in place of it, right? The sunbonnet Sioux is very versatile and very, very classic, right? You could do it all kinds of different ways. You don't have to do the leaves on it, but we're going to do an autumn Sioux bonnet, sun bonnet Sioux. <laughs> Get tongue tied. So that's what we're doing next week. So make sure you subscribe uh, and follow along. And I look forward to doing that with you next week. Okay, so let's come over to the pressing board. Here we are at the pressing board. I've already pre-cut all of my pieces with my scan and cut. So they're all there. Today I'm using some fabric that a good friend of mine sent to me and uh, is Christmas themed. And uh, I'm just mixing it with some other fabrics that I had. And those pieces are ready to go. Let's take a look. We had two pages of tracing templates. They have been mirror imaged and are ready to uh, trace if you have a fusible like what I'm using today, Heat and Bond Light, or Wonder Under, any of those. If you're using freezer paper for your applique, you're going to need to trace from the back side, right? Uh, we have the little hoop for the hanger of our ornament, right? The O in Joy is actually an ornament. And we have the top piece that holds the, the hanger. And there are multiple different ways that you could do this little piece. I'm not doing that in fabric. You could do a hand stitch with some embroidery floss. Wouldn't that be pretty? Uh, you could use some fabric paints. I gave some ideas here. Maybe some uh, like green or silver glittery puffy paint. Wouldn't that be pretty? So I did give you some ideas today. I think I'm going to do a satin stitch uh, for my little loop-de-loop -loop hanger part. Okay, so those are the tracing templates and I did give you a placement guide and in this placement guide you only have two sheets to cut and bond together, right? So there's the placement guide and I'm going to be using that with my silicone mat. 
Let me get this iron warmed up. And we're gonna fuse all of these pieces and make this one applique that we're gonna fuse to a background. Okay, so let me just bring out my silicone mat. We're gonna put that right over top. And we can bring in our pieces and usually my heat and bond sticks to the mat when I lift everything up. Today it was doing it some of the times and some of the times not. <laughs> so I'm just going to remove the heat and bond off of the pieces that are still on there. There we go. And for my applique, I want the ornament to be under the letters J and Y. You could do it however you want to layer these, right? But I'm just going to bring this and put that down first. Like that. The hanger part, I'm going to put right underneath. Like that. Isn't that going to be so cute? And then the J is going to come in like that. And the Y is going to overlap right over here. There we go. Now I'm going to just take my iron and just lightly fuse these pieces so they all stick together and become bonded with one another. Today, or actually this whole week, I am on chicken duty. <laughs> Harlan is in Vermont. And so I am in charge of the chickens. <laughs> I've been doing all the farm girl activities like uh, raking the run, cleaning out the coop and all of that fun stuff. Collecting the eggs. When I say eggs, right now we get two eggs a day. <laughs> Most of our girls are too young to lay yet, but we do have two that are laying. And so um, collecting the eggs and taking care of the babies. This afternoon we have uh, an excursion of free ranging planned. <laughs> Isn't that funny? All right, we're gonna let that cool off and uh, we should be able to lift that all up as one piece. Now, like I mentioned in the beginning today, this applique is formatted to fit a square um, 12 inches by 12 inches finished, right? You would cut it 12 and a half by 12 and a half, just like we have been doing, right? Well, I already know I'm not going to have time to make a table runner for this year. And I know I'm not going to have time to do a quilt. But what I do have time to do is to make this into like a little wall quilt or something I like putting stuff on my fridge. It's a great place to decorate. I don't have to decorate a whole bunch of stuff and I can just swap stuff on my fridge very easily. So I thought let's make this and I'll have it to hang on the fridge when it comes time. Y'all we are not even at Halloween yet <laughs> or Thanksgiving. But usually around Thanksgiving, I like to start thinking about some kind of decorations. Uh, and usually the weekend after we start decorating for Christmas. So this will be all ready to go. So what I did, let me just bring this in for you, is I took my 12 and a half inch square ruler and I drew myself some chalk lines. So my little wall quilt or fridge quilt is going to be 12 and a half inches unfinished right 12 and a half inches and then i drew two more lines and this was seven and a half inches right and i just made myself a nice little rectangle i think that'll be a great size i have that right like that and i also had enough to do the same it's going to be the same color <laughs> Uh, back fabric and a thin piece of warm and natural batting. I thought let's work in a little bit of reverse today. So while that's really cooling off, we're going to just set that aside. Okay. 
And what I'm going to do is I am going to lay my batting down. Pardon the strings. I have strings all over the place. <laughs> I'm going to lay my batting down first. I don't think I'm going to do a binding on this little wall quilt. So we're going to do it this way. Let's put the batting down. Let's put this back fabric down with the right side facing up. Is that how I want to do it? You know what? I should have. <laughs> I should have made my markings on the back. Hold on a second because I didn't really think this through. I'm going to put my markings on the back so it gives me a nice guide to sew with. <laughs> okay, we're back. This makes way much more sense to me. Here we go. Same markings, 12 and a half inches wide, seven and a half inches tall, right? Nice little rectangle. We're going to place this right over top, just like this. Okay. And if you want to, you could throw a couple pins in there so it's not going to shift around. So I'm just going to put a pin in each one of these corners. That's just going to keep all of these layers together and right where they're supposed to be. All right, so let's come over to the sewing machine. Guess what? I'm sewing a straight stitch right on that traced line all the way around. Not going to leave an opening. I'm going to show you how we're going to bypass having to turn that opening. Let's come on over to the sewing machine. All right. Straight stitch. I'm going to lower my straight stitch to a 2.0. Uh, nice and close little straight stitch. And I'm just picking a place. Let's come all the way down here. And I'm going to stitch on this line all the way around. All right, we're going to come back here and I'm going to take these pins out. I'm going to switch this camera over. And we're going to trim off the extra little bits, right? And I might have to adjust the camera, so hold on a second. Okay, there we go. I'm going to take my rotary cutter and just a ruler and I'm going to trim uh, a lot of the extra off leaving just a small little seam allowance. It's going to be a tiny little seam allowance. I say that is about one eighth. You don't really have to measure it. You can eyeball it. Uh, but it's going to be really nice and small. We're just removing a lot of that bulky stuff that's going to be on the inside. There we go. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna peel off the applique from our silicone mat, right? And we're just going to place it like this, kind of exactly where we would want it to be. And then I'm gonna take a pin 
and right underneath of this ornament, like right here, of course, I picked a pin that's not going to work. <laughs> right there, I'm going to carefully cut a slit. Now we just want to be careful that we're separating the front from the back and we're only cutting through which it feels like <laughs> this part always makes me nervous I'm always scared I'm going to cut through the back but I can sort of feel that that is just this top fabric and I'm going to cut a little slit we're going to use this slit to turn everything right side out. And then we don't have any pesky <laughs> openings to close, right? All right. It's just big enough. I might struggle a little bit turning this right side out, but it's just big enough to pull everything through. Yeah, the other day, <laughs> the other day I let the chickens out to free range a little bit and stretch their little feetsies and pick up some bugs, right? Get some grass and get some exercise. And when it was time for them all to go back in the run, most of them, you know, all you have to do is bring over the bag of mealworms and usually they will all come and follow you right back in. But four of them had decided that they were not going to listen. So I had to wrangle up four of the chickens and bribe them with some bread to come back in the run. Well, every night, if they're out and about, uh, every night when the sun goes down, they automatically all go into their coop, right? To go to sleep. That's where their perches are, their nesting boxes. And uh, they're ready for bed when the sun goes down, right? And you don't have to round them up. You don't have to coax them back in. They just automatically go into the run and then go into their coop. So my plan today is to be smart. And I'm going to let them out shortly after supper. And it's been getting dark a little bit earlier. So I'll give them about an hour and a half, right? before the sun goes down and they'll automatically go into the run and into the coop. That's my plan for today. <laughs> All right, so I've turned it right side out, right? Let me just get a pokey tool. Pokey tool, pokey tool. Pokey tool, pokey tool. Where have all of my pokey tools gone to? Of course, I left it across the room. I had to go get it. This is just an embossing stylus that I got from the Dollar Tree, right? It has a little really tiny ball on one end and a more blunt uh, ball on the other. And I like to use this a lot of times to poke my corners out just a little bit. I'm trying not to ruffle up that opening too much. And we're poking, poking, poking. There we go. All right, and I'm just gonna just straighten up these seams and make sure they're all nice and straight. I'm gonna heat up my iron. And I'm gonna give this a press before we put the applique on. Just press it nice and flat all the way around, right? I'm gonna sort of just bring in that cut just a little bit, like so. Today I was smart. I feel very smart today. <laughs> I gave Poppy an empty cereal box to play with because he loves to tear uh, cardboard boxes like that. You know, like a macaroni and cheese box, a pasta box, cereal boxes. He loves to just shred them into a million pieces. And I thought, well, that will keep him busy <laughs> while I'm recording today.
All right, everything is nice and flat now. And let's cover up that opening with our applique. And now we don't have any little pesky <laughs> opening to finish. Now, keep in mind, we have that little tiny hanger. So I'm going to lower this just a smidgen to allow for that. I think that looks good. I think it can scoot over. Just a little bit. I'm kind of looking at the space here and the space here, right? That's good. All right, and now we're just fusing. That's gonna close our opening and hide that right underneath. And now when we sew down all of this applique, we're gonna be quilting our little uh, wall quilt at the same time. Ooh, that iron is hot. I'm gonna go ahead and just set that over there. We're gonna let this cool off for just a second. So there we go on the back, right? Nice and finished. And there's the front. Now I wanna get just a little chalk marker and I'm gonna draw on, and I'm just eyeballing it, if you're working with a lighter fabric or a light box, you can use the little tracing template of the little hanger, but I'm just going to eyeball it like that <laughs> and just draw it on like that. So I have some black thread in both the top and the bobbin, and I think I want to do a blanket stitch on my applique. And... Um, before I do that, I think I do want to do just a straight stitch around the edge. That's just going to sort of secure this nice and rectangle, right? And uh, it'll so sort of secure all those layers again before we do the applique. So let's do a straight stitch around the edge. I really need to oil this chair. <laughs> there we go. And a uh, straight stitch. I am going to increase this stitch length just a little bit for this, though. And uh, so I'm going to use a 2.4 with a straight stitch. And I am going to scoot this needle over. I'd say it's about a quarter of an inch. Okay, there we go. We've got the straight stitch all the way around and it just sort of finishes it just a little bit uh, neater, right? So now I can choose a blanket stitch and I'm going to bring over a scrap piece of fabric. And actually I'm going to use the back side of a scrap piece of fabric and I'm going to choose a blanket stitch. So Let's see. I know I want it to be a little bit wider. I think that'll be nice. Okay, so see how it was really close together in the beginning? And uh, that should give me a nice little border around each one of the letters. So my blanket stitch on my machine is a 2.4 for the width and a 1.8 for the length. And that's the stitch that I'm going to use. But y'all, there are so many stitches in your machine that you could use. So feel free to experiment and have fun with it, right? All right, I am going to just get started down here. 
And uh, yeah, we're gonna do the same blanket stitch on all of these pieces. Nope. <laughs> I actually want to start on the applique that's underneath of the top pieces. So I'm going to start with the ornament first. That's what I like to do. See, I think that little uh, blanket stitch with the black thread is just enough to separate where those fabrics overlap, and I really like that. So uh, all I have left to do is stitch down the Y. Then we're going to change out the bobbin and the top thread to a white thread. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Okay, so one thing that I, I realized sewing all of this stuff down is this applique is a really great exercise. If you are extremely new to applique and stitching down uh, pieces that have curves, right? We have all kinds of curves. We have like an outgoing curve and an ingoing curve or like a concave curve. And figuring out the right place to start and stop, whether you're starting uh, stopping in the background or in the applique. That is one of the, the trickiest part about stitching down applique, right? So this is a really good exercise on that. Now, several years ago, I did a video. I will try to remember to put the link down in the description box on uh, sewing down curves, right? And points and where to start and stop. So that might be helpful if you are extremely new. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over the thread and all I wanna do now is do a little satin stitch 
right over top of my chalk little line there. If you had some metallic thread, that would be great to use. I don't think I have any. Or if I do, it is buried in a big bin of thread that I have not gone through yet. <laughs> so I'm going to use a white thread and we're going to stitch down a satin stitch. Okay, I just switched out my threads and my machine, which is a Juki HZL F600, has a defined satin stitch. If you have the same machine uh, or an Juki HZL with a different number like F300, I think it is, and F200, I'm not sure, F400, uh, it's number five on the keypad, right? Number five is a satin stitch. Now a satin stitch, if you don't have a predetermined satin stitch button or presetting, is about the same thing as a zigzag stitch that is really close together, right? Um, so yeah, I'm just going to choose the satin stitch. And we're going to test this out and adjust the stitch before we start stitching onto the quilt. And I know that's going to be hard to see, <laughs> uh, but there we go. And I really actually just like the uh, default setting. So for my satin stitch, it is a 2.6 on the width and a 0.4 on the length. Again, if you don't have a predetermined satin stitch, try this with the zigzag and adjust from there if you really like the look and the thickness of this stitch. And there we go. Nice little hanger for our ornament. Let's come on over here to the pressing board and we're going to take a look. I'm going to cut this little thread on the front. I'm going to heat up my iron. We're going to give this a final press. And let's cut any little jump stitches on the back that we might have. Really all I have are the threads where the uh, thread cutter ties a little knot on the back. <laughs> there we go. So that is the back side. And uh, stitching down all of our applique at this point, quilts are a little quilt at the same time, right? So that saves a step. Now I'm just going to give this a press. and make her nice and flat. And there's my first Christmas decoration. Is that my first Christmas decoration for this year? Maybe, maybe not, I forget now. <laughs> but there we go, isn't that cute? And uh, I can just hang that right up on my fridge. So at the Dollar Tree, they have these magnets. And they have little clips. You know what? I'm going to go grab one so I can show it to you. Wow, my dad is making brownies next door. <laughs> and uh, today I shut the door to my studio just in case the bird or the cat wanted to play, you know, their games like they did last week. It would block some of the noise, right? So as soon as I opened up that door, the smell of brownies has come all the way from their kitchen through their house into my house and now i really want brownies <laughs> the beauty of it is our houses are connected by a door and i don't think i have to make brownies i think i'm just gonna go ask them i'm gonna go get a brownie from them <laughs> okay back to what i went out there for I got distracted by brownies. This is the little magnet clip, y'all. And I think there are like two or three of these come in a pack from the Dollar Tree. But it has a pretty good strong magnet. So you remember the um, 
the autumn leaves that we did last week. Was that last week? That was last week's applique. The flowers for autumn. That I did as a 12 inch finished project, right? With a facing on the back. So it has some extra fabric on it too. This magnet is strong enough that I clipped that quilt and stuck it right to the side of my fridge and it's not sliding down. So it holds quite a bit of weight. If you have a Dollar Tree close by or maybe try Family Dollar, Dollar General, Walmarts, Targets, but it's just a magnet with a clip. See that? It's a pretty strong clip too, like I have to use some good thumb force to open it up. But all I do, y'all, is clip it like this and dink right on the side of the refrigerator. <laughs> uh, nothing fancy, no fancy hangers. And uh, I really like that because what if I want to use this as a mug rug? I don't have a hanger attached uh, and I can just repurpose this, right? So there we go. There's my little hanger. And I really like that a lot, right? So there's just one more idea. If you don't want to make this into a quilt block, try a little mini quilt like this. Actually, you could do the same thing with all of the appliques that I have been showing, right? You don't have to make them into quilts. You could do all kinds of stuff with them. All right, y'all. Uh, yeah, this will be free through Thursday. I've kind of changed the wording because I think that was confusing for people. Although we had a great big debate here in my house <laughs> about the word until. Uh, like what until means to everyone. And I guess it's uh, a different meaning for whoever you ask. But so I've changed the wording. The PDF templates are free through Thursday, all day Thursday. As of Friday, sometime Friday, they're going in the Etsy shop. So get them while they're free. Uh, but even combined with the cutting files, it's not that much, right? So if you've missed the cutoff day for the free, there's a link down in the description box. Go check it out. Uh, it's a few dollars and you get the cutting files and the PDF tracing templates. So, um, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Uh, I cannot wait to do the autumn sunbonnet suit block with you. Lots of possibilities with that applique, isn't it? Okay, everybody, I am off to go snag a brownie from my parents. Go check for eggs and uh, work a little bit on my cross quilt. I have a binding to do this afternoon. Bye, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye.